I am still reeling under the impact of the previous two speakers. But I promise that since I train teachers in large numbers, I will keep whatever you said in mind in future. I am going to speak about technology for education, which is now causing disruption globally. And I propose that we must take steps to ensure that this disruption is constructive. First and foremost, our education is splintered in silos. So we have divided education, particularly the higher education, in well-known branches of arts, science, commerce, engineering. We then further break up engineering as electrical, mechanical, civil. This breakup is essential to cater to the growing body of knowledge properly. However, most people, and most certainly students and teachers, are increasingly forgetting that the real life problems do not come stamped with a field name. There is no problem which says I am an electrical engineering problem or I am a finance problem. The real world just says I am a problem solving. And we need to prepare students to solve those problems. We forget, for example, that technology and engineering and science <coughs> does a critical part of problem solving, namely, it comes up with a feasibility to solve a problem technically. But you need commerce and finance to ensure the viability of a solution, which is often not understood by scientists and, and engineers because management is completely different. Only IIMs can deal with management. Engineering colleges must not talk about it. But there is another important thing, apart from feasibility and apart from viability, is something called desirability, and that can be understood and appreciated by people only if they are exposed to humanities, arts. Now that is again something which is a different stream and not touched by people who teach or learn these specific topics. So these silos, well, you cannot destroy these silos, but it is important that everyone who undergoes any kind of education appreciates the confluence of all these three in order to get a holistic education. We have a peculiar problem of ensuring quality among scale and diversity. Our diversity is well known. We have 22 languages officially recognized and thousands of dialects. We have all major religions of the world. We have all ethnicities. And as an added attraction, we specialize in fighting over each one of these. Yet the strength is that we have still remained a thriving democracy and a republic all through these years. So that, that means there is hope. However, to ensure quality amongst this diversity is not an easy task. And the educational system attempts to do it in its own conventional standardized way. If you look at the desire of an individual learner, now, my learning abilities are different. My ways of learning are different. There is some child who learns through lots of examples. There is another smart kid who directly jumps into examination. There is a third one who has to be taught methodically, first lecture, then problem solving, then example, and so on and so forth. These diversities are unfortunately not taken into account by the so-called system. And that is because the system believes in one solution fits all. One hour lectures, 40 hours in a semester, at the end of it exams, mid-sem exam, end-sem exam, marks, grades, end of the semester, next semester. We have therefore created an environment of unfortunate rat race where everybody believes that my worth is examined and evaluated and assessed by the world only in relative terms. And I come to believe that I must be better than someone else to be useful. If I am not better than someone else, then I am useless. Every rat race will always create a few winners, but a large number of losers. But we forget that rat races create winner rats and loser rats, but only rats, not human beings. And in order to create human beings, we have to do something different. Can we cater to these individual needs of a learner? So far it was impossible. But given the technology that is coming up, particularly the massive open online courses, which permit us to provide intelligent tutoring systems with massive data analytics that can be done to provide each individual learner a supplementary material which caters to that individual learner's method of learning, not just the score in performance. So that is something that is exciting. 
The response of the system, on the other hand, by system I mean our schools, our colleges, our universities, including the so-called elite institutions like IITs and IIMs, the response of the system is to further strengthen itself. Those of you who have read Godel Escherbach would remember that Hofstadter says that any system, when it becomes complex, it acquires life. And any life form, the fundamental uh, aspect of any life form is to preserve itself. So the university system is now geared to preserve itself. You, as Sugato Mitra said, it is not broken. It is too solid to be broken. He suggests bypass it through his experiment in hole in the wall. But I suggest that the disruption, if it occurs, it could be detrimental if an alternate system is not in place because the people will suffer. And therefore, I have titled my talk as constructive disruption must be attempted. The system will not change itself, but the technology adoption by individuals in the system eventually might focus the system to adopt these things. The enabling technology is what I would like to briefly uh, take you through. Uh, this mostly uh, revolves around the efforts that have been done by the IIT system because sadly I am familiar mostly with those. But there are many and many and many other systems, uh, efforts to develop the educational technology. We developed these affordable clicker devices. Many of you would know Kon Banega Karodpati had these clicker devices. When I tried to first purchase them, they cost $30. And the Indian agent said it will cost 2,500 rupees when you convert a dollar into rupees. We developed it, uh, this particular device, the first one cost us 650 rupees, the second one cost us 1130 rupees. Immediately we were given the responsibility to develop the Akash tablet software and hardware. Akash is not an Indian innovation in technology. The technology came from various people, manufacturing happened in China. But we negotiated a low price point for an extremely useful tablet. We purchased them for 2,463 rupees. And when we purchased those tablets, we put Linux on it, and we put a whole lot of applications, including the clicker application. Today, in 300 colleges, about 10,000 teachers have been trained. Many of them use the Akash devices as clicker devices for online quizzes in their classrooms. Here is an Android tablet Akash with a small experimental setup, which this kind of experience would be very costly in a conventional sense. There is an electronic board called Arduino, uh, which is an experiment board available in open source. People use it across the world, costing around $35. We built a, a, a board which is just this big. We call it Anuduino, Anu as in atom. We put a temperature sensor. This is the circuit. There is a temperature sensor on it connected by a USB cable. And there is an application software which actually collects temperature data, displays it, and water. The software is open source, that is free. And this entire gadget which is attached costs us only 90 rupees. Why I tell you this is to suggest that in these schools, very, very inexpensive experiments can be built and designed to teach students the interesting aspects of science and other things without much help. We run Scilab, which is a high-end software uh, mirroring the functionality of MATLAB, which is a very popular commercial software, but it costs lakhs of rupees in license. And in India, people unfortunately plagiarize. And MATLAB, like Microsoft, encourages that, because while students you do that, but when you come and join as professors, we'll fleece you later. We believe in open source because the Scilab costs nothing and we have ported it onto this tab. We have a netbook computer which, because people actually want to key in their inputs for submitting a report and so on, we are uh, a whole lot of Indian language uh, keyboards which are soft keyboards are also available. And this, this device it looks like a laptop, it's actually a, a modified Akash, it does not have a touch screen and it has a keyboard but cost us 5,000 rupees plus taxes which is again, again an affordable device. Akash uh, received a lot of bad publicity unfortunately and because of the change of government the Akash name may be a taboo name. The point is not Akash, the point is the nation needs affordable access and computing device. The number of students in this country 
are huge, humongous. Some statistics was quoted, let me add to it, 352 million Indians are younger than 14 years, younger than 15 years, 14 or less. 352 million. Now it's number which is larger than the populations of most countries and they will all be touching base, trying to get some good higher education. We don't have the systems to do that unless we do something important. We started training teachers <coughs> under a program called Train 1,000 Teachers, which we extended to train 10,000 teachers. How we train 10,000 teachers is a rigorous two-week training given at 300 remote centers. These are all remote centers which are placed there. At each remote center, 30 to 40 teachers assemble for two weeks. We deliver interactive lectures from IIT Bombay using a Skype-like software, but it's a uh, 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 not just a video conferencing software, but a simulated classroom software developed by another sister institution called Amruta <coughs> University, called AVU. We deliver interactive lectures in the morning to all 10,000 people. In the afternoon, they conduct labs and tutorials in the respective remote centers under the supervision of a workshop coordinator. The point about quality is how do we make sure that the tutorials and labs are conducted with the same rigor with which we conduct them in IIT. So what we do is we collect these 300 workshop coordinators who are subject experts in their colleges anyway to IIT two months ahead of this workshop. And for one week, we grill them rigorously. We make them do exactly the same experiments, make them go through the same tutorials that they are supposed to conduct. Because they also have unfortunately not solved hard problems like the ones which IITs or IIM system. You know, people ask me the difference between IITs and other engineering colleges. No difference. Same human beings and caliber of human beings is absolutely similar. There would be difference in some respect, but otherwise you have brilliant people everywhere. The difference is that the conventional system under which the 3,500 colleges function specialize in giving conventional examinations where question one is describe something, question two is explain something, Question three is write short notes and then some piddly problem somewhere. In the IIT system, we have no such thing. Problem one, problem two, problem three, problem four. And the university system says solve any six out of the ten questions. I benefited from it when I did my undergraduate. I could barely study 50% of the syllabus to score 85% marks. I was flattened to ground when I joined IIT as a master's student later. So our principle is Solving 10 simple problems successfully will give you a lot of pleasure, but not much knowledge. Attempting to solve 10 very difficult problems and not getting a single solution correctly will give you a lot of frustration, but give you tremendous knowledge. Now we are trying to incorporate this paradigm into the education everywhere by this training. Here is a coordinator's workshop that we conduct, 300 people whom we bring to IIT Bombay. Here is a workshop for teachers who are at a remote center. I particularly like this because ever since we started this 300 remote center business, we have started getting uh, love letters from teachers, well, lady teachers, who say that thanks for arranging this workshop in my town because I could have never left my children and family to come to IIT Bombay for two weeks. We feel very heartened. This is a byproduct of our effort. We are empowering 50% of the nation's population. Here is an attempt in spoken tutorials, a new design done by my colleague, Professor uh, Kannan Maudgalya, where 10 minute audio with a little video, a small payload thing, 5 lakh students have benefited in learning about how to use open source tools. We are now trying to adapt this methodology in preparing complete courseware. Virtual labs, a, a, an approach coordinated by IIT Delhi, but all IITs and many other institutions are participating in it, where smaller colleges which don't have costly equipment can actually conduct experiments virtually. Some of you might have heard of this, but this is a very important site, the National Repository of Open Educational Resources. This is for school education, and these resources have been collected assiduously over the years, and new, beings are, new ones are being created by NCERT. Recently, when we standardized on EPUB 3 kind of standard for books to ebooks project, we said we'll also run MOOCs and we'll involve all of these open resources in, in training uh, students. The massive open online courses have been, uh, have seen many experiments in India. Globally, you would be aware of EDX, Coursera, 
Udacity and several other organizations. NPTEL uh, does the online courses uh, from IIT Madras. IIT Kanpur does a MOOC on MOOCs. Swayam is what we have built, built, built on Open EDX. This might soon be launched by the ministry. I will conclude by, I'm, oh, I'm out of time. Okay. I'll, but I'll, I'll take just one minute because the aspiring Indian mind story which changed me about 15 years ago, there's a boy, boy I met in a place called Wada. I was called to explain information technology in Marathi. I was told there are tribal students there. About 300 students had collected. Very good interaction. I spoke in Marathi for the first time. Afterwards, when children had flocked around me to take my signature and I was feeling like a film uh, uh, actor or something, one boy was standing and he said, I want to ask you some question. He waited patiently for 10 minutes. I was being whizzed away by the organizers because some local MP wanted to have a cup of tea and move. This boy held my hand and said, I have walked 10 kilometers to listen to you. You must answer my question. I asked him, why did you walk 10 kilometers? He says, I walk 6 kilometers every day to my school. I asked him, don't you have tum tum bus or something? He said, yes, there are, but my family cannot afford that. And then he proudly said, sir, I stand first in the class. I asked him, what do you want to know? He says, how to become an IT expert. I thought he wants to get a good job, so I explained to him, do engineering. He was in ninth standard, up here for JE, etc. And then I curiously asked him, why do you want to become an IT expert? And he said, that you know a student of yours called Nandan Nilekani has set up a company called Infosys. I want to set up a company bigger than him. Now that is aspiration. And that is a tribal boy who walks 10 kilometers and fortunately he has not become a, a criminal minded person or a person who is dejected. In spite of life dejecting him completely, he stands with his vision. How many such children would be there, boys and girls? How many schools? One lakh schools. In each school, eighth standard, seventh standard, ninth standard. I don't give a damn for somebody standing first. But I, in, I, I, would, I think you would agree that in every school, every class, there will be three or four people who would be aspiring to do something extraordinary and they can do it. What is it that we are doing in our educational system? So not just give one solution to all for education, but cater to individuals, those who are weak, handhold them. Others who take the normal strike, let them give. But do something special for those who are smarter, who have larger aspirations, and who want to do something extraordinary. They are the ones who will build the nation. Thank you so much.